Hi guys, this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to practice our chord changes combining two of the rather tough things to do in music or rather maybe the toughest things if you think about triads at least to shift between two rather tricky chords which we'll call the tritone interval which I'm going to explain shortly and also how to shift between them using rhythmic variations using odd time meter and making the speed of the shifting incrementally faster as you go along and whilst shifting we practice broken chords we practice arpeggios we practice a nice pattern which we have notated for you so first off a little bit of theory in the lesson as to what is the tritone how do we change between them how do we pair them and then a little bit on the topic of inversions on how you can shift between them so if you're looking at the topic of chord inversions which is the ability to move smoothly between any two chords on the piano or guitar or anywhere let's say c major going to F major, right? You know that it's to shift in the most efficient way possible using the least motion possible. You want to keep the common notes consistent. So that is the general flow of inversions. So I've taken the same strategy of chord inversions by using the tritone interval between chords. And using this technique, you can practice all the 12 plus 12 major and minor chords out there in all their respective inversions. So stay tuned to the very end. It's going to give you a very holistic way to practice all your triads. And we are tackling the biggest challenge of them all. We are poking the bear when it comes to our chord movement, so to speak. And while doing that, I love rhythm, as some of you already know. Um, so we are going to bring in a lot of rhythm patterns using arpeggios in this lesson and before we get started it'll be awesome if you would consider hitting that subscribe button on our Nathaniel School of Music YouTube channel you could also hit that bell icon for regular notifications and remind yourself of new videos which get released on our channel pretty much every other day and also my handwritten notes are waiting for you on our patreon channel forward slash Jason Zach do consider heading over there and supporting us let's get cracking so first off what what is a tritone? A tritone, the way I look at it is it's the only interval in music which divides the octave, believe it or not, into exactly two slices. So if you want to divide something into half in music, you need the tritone. And if you look at the circle of fifths, the tritone is the farthest away from anywhere. It is so far that it is the diameter from anywhere in that circle to the next point. So if you connect the diameter from let's say C in the circle of fifths, you're going to go all the way down to F sharp. Also implies that the interval contained between those two notes, C and F sharp in this case, is going to end up being the most tense. While the closest neighbors, namely C and G, seem to sound very stable and peaceful with respect to each other and almost emotionless. It's almost like a blank canvas or something. So the tritone gives you that tension and that immediate urgency to resolve. So if there is a tension in music, what do we do? We try to resolve it to something, to a chord or to a new note. So without tension and resolution, you can't really do much with this dynamic art form as it's called. It's not a static picture, isn't it? Music. It's not a painting or a sculpture. It's a art in motion. It moves for sort of like a movie for the years, if you think about it. So if you take these two intervals now, C and F sharp, and build chords out of them. What are the two possible chords? Well, there are many, but the two I've chosen for this video are major and minor. So you're going to want to do C major. Let's just stick with major major for now. So C major going to F sharp major. That is the harmonic motion. That's the chord movement. C major, F sharp major. They are both separated by a tritone. And this is a very, very interesting interval. It's used a lot in movie theme scores for sure. I'm sure you're observing this. And if you um, change the chords to minor, another very beautiful artistic sound. 
So if you imagine a movie score by Hans Zimmer or Danny Elfman, you're probably going to have these sort of connections between the chords. And right after this video, it would be nice if you can watch my series called Mysterious Chord Connections, which we link up in the description. It shows you all your Jurassic Park kind of chords and all your scary movie chords or Halloween chords and so on and so forth. Also the Batman chords. So uh, do check out that after this lesson. So coming back, you, you know how to form a tritone. Now it's very important to note that the inversion of a tritone is itself. So it's the only musical interval which when inverted is pretty much the same. So C's tritone is F sharp. What is F sharp's tritone you might argue or think? C. C's tritone is F sharp. F sharp's tritone is C. Is, does that work anywhere else in life? C's perfect fourth is F. F's perfect fifth is C. F's perfect fourth when you think about it is not C. It's not the inversion. It's B flat. So the only interval in music which when inverted becomes pretty much the same thing is the tritone interval. And the connection or the movement between the tritone when you play two triads, a major to a major or a major to a minor, is going to be rather tricky, which is why I've chosen it for its artistic nature or its mysterious nature, as well as its technical complexity. If you can shift the tritone, you've pretty much got yourself covered with any two triad motions between two chords with three notes, basically. So, we form the tritone pair C to F sharp. How many tritone pairs would there be in musical life? Well, there are 12 notes in music. C to F sharp is a tritone. F sharp to C is the next tritone. So that's your tritone pair, as I like to call it. Then look at all the other tritones, just for your reference. D's tritone is A flat. Again, if you see the circle of fifths wheel, Diameter, if you draw it correctly, you'll, you'll get the greatest distance from D to be A flat. So D to the A flat, D major to the A flat major or D minor to the A flat minor. Then what about E tritone? E tritone is B flat, E tritone is B flat. You can either go E to up to B flat, E down to B flat. Okay, that's your tritone combo. Similarly for D, what did we do? D, A flat, D, A flat. C was first. C, F sharp, C, F sharp. And then let's look at F tritone. F to the B, B to the F, F down to B, B up to F. And then there's one more tritone pair to learn. That would be G down, G to the D flat. G tritone is D flat. G to D flat, you can practice it lower as well. Okay. Write down all your pairs. You can even see my handwritten notes, which give you all that. Then A, last pair. A to the E flat, A to the E flat. So C, F sharp, D, A flat, E, B flat, F, B, G, D flat, A, E flat. B, F. And then it obviously repeats because each tritone is the same, right? So C to F is F to C. So we have six tritone pairs. So what I first want you to do before you get your right hand started is to just shift between the roots of these chords. That can be a workout just for your left hand. So you do C, E, F sharp and go uh, either down to F sharp or up to F sharp. So C, F sharp, C down to F sharp, C up to F sharp, C down to F sharp. It's a great way to recognize your notes because they are all over the place. They are not consecutive or grouped diatonically, so to speak, because a tritone is not part of a major scale, uh, it, from the root at least. So you can also practice this in a nice disco-like manner. What pushes your shifting? You can do an eighth note, dum bum 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 F sharp. You can do other tritone combos, D A flat, D and A flat, maybe E B flat, E B flat, F B F B G D flat, G D flat, A E flat, A E flat. 
those are all your tritone left hand workouts so six of them are there and now coming to the right hand so the right hand you're kind of forced to use inversions because if you just go it's a huge jump you need your eyes to do them and as i generally tell students while discussing inversions if ever you've done it well you have to do it blindly you have to do it without your eyes so very tough i would need my eyes eventually to find that right um so you need to definitely use inversion so the practice would be c e g how do i go to f sharp major perhaps this way and the challenge for this particular movement is that your fingering matters a lot so if you take c major you will play f sharp major like that because you've given yourself the ring finger and the pinky finger room of freedom to play those notes in the upper register c major c sharp f sharp a sharp you're playing f sharp in the second inversion second inversion is root in the center right however if you were to play c major like this with your pinky on the top then you have to choose f sharp major like this you'll have to slide left slide down basically so depending on the fingering the tritone position would matter you practice this maybe start with another inversion of c the first inversion of c and let's see how that goes So basically from every point you have two possible inversions that's why I like the tritone exercise because a normal triad C to F is just one way to go from C major to F major once you've planted C you know F is there you it can't possibly be the other way but tritones you have two potential ways of going towards so if you take the first inversion of C you can play f sharp that way if you're going downward if you're going upward if you give yourself a finger to towards the right you can go up and then if you take the second inversion of c major you can do your thing to f sharp and for some reason practicing f sharp going to c would also be a nice challenge don't just do c to f sharp just do for practice purposes f sharp to c f sharp to c it'll force you to use the c major as an inversion if your f sharp was in root right so practice that and this exercise gets really wholesome and will cover pretty much all the 24 chords in all of their inversions 24 means 12 major 12 minor are there in life right so if you want to cover all the 24 here's what you do you take the other tritone pairs and start working on them d a flat d lower a flat so you're doing all the versions of going from d major to a flat major even though it's tough your this skill or this investment of time which you put in will help you play a lot of things in the future i can guarantee you so the other thing you might want to do is because i want to achieve 24 chords 12 major and 12 minor how do i bring in the minor look at the binary permutations that exist between major and minor so you could do coming back to c to f sharp major 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 what if i now say minor minor c minor f sharp minor both minors what if i like major minor c major f sharp minor you can start with the root positions then minor major but you'll realize inversions are a lot easier it clearly becomes a very wholesome exercise with all the 24 chords 
I'd like to cap off the discussion with an exciting chord pattern to play this stuff with and also explore perhaps different time signatures along the way. And as the time signatures get introduced, the shifting between the chords is going to get trickier and trickier because you have to count the time signature and the number of beats is going to reduce. And the other part which I think is going to make this chord pattern exciting is it combines block chords with an arpeggio system. Whenever we deal with a pattern, we play blocks, you know, or arpeggios. I thought, let's combine them. So the pattern is... So block, tuck, 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 hit. So you could count it as one E and a two E and a repeat and a four. You could count it as sixteens if you want to play fast. Or if you'd like to do it in an 8th note style, feel free, it'll be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and so. Block, arpeggio, arpeggio, something like block, arpeggio, oh, 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 block, arpeggio, oh, 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 change, arpeggio, oh, 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 change, dun, 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 dun. So totally, if you count the beats, it'll end up being a 4x4 four four or maybe an 8x8 eight eight if you want to call, call count it as 8 quavers. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. Same shapes. You can even do minor. So that's your default pattern. So practice that. I think you can use this even in songs which you're about to play. It's a nice piano pattern for sure. Now to make that change a bit more exciting and challenging for you, you can drop one beat from the 4x4 or 8x8 and convert it to 7x8. So then it's going to be, I'll play and then show. So if you count it, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, tuck. you can also use corner call, tuck, dimi, tuck it, tuck, dimi, tuck it, tuck, junu, tuck it, tuck, dimi, tuck it, ta, tuck it, dum, tick it, tuck it, tuck, dimi, tuck it. To give you that vibe of seven, if you don't use conocol, what tends to happen when you play piano or guitar is you go one and two and three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. The reason that's wrong is it's actually eight. You're just not saying the number eight, you know, which is wrong because you observed that extra beat in any case. So don't go one and two and three and four and and think you're doing seven. No, you need to force that seven in by saying what I would recommend, either one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, if your voice, if you're phrasing it like that. I'm I'm phrasing it as one two three four one two three one two three four one two. Easy on the tongue would be using conical. Taka dimi takita taka dimi takita taka dimi takita taka dimi takita ta. So we've converted or we've moved from eight to rather challenging seven. What's lesser than seven? Six. So block arpeggio. That's been our pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. So as you can see, the time you are going to get is a lot lesser, and it's still musical because you are following the meter of six eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm phrasing six, eight with one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm not doing one, two, three, one, two. I'm not doing it in the lazy way, which we use for six by eight songs in general. Uh, let's move forward. What about five, eight? One, two, three, one, two, 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 one. You can count like that. Or you can use Konal Taka Taki Ta 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 Taka Taki
tuck a tucky to tuck a tucky to tuck a tucky to ta, tuck it to tuck a tucky to ta. And then, of course, you can come to a four and see how ridiculously fast it becomes because four you just have four sub beats to move to the next chord and not just any next chord you're going to the toughest possible change in triad history so that's four this will really squeeze out all the technique you need to play the piano then triplets at one two three one two three or three eight if you want to call it that that's every subdivision and then something which even I don't want to do will be let's not bother doing that now right guys so let's just recap we've looked at the tritone a very exciting interval in music for composing for general study and creating this great art form you need to have tension and resolution and tritone provides the best possible tension and it's been a tried and tested tool for composers for hundreds of years from the classical era uh, so then we looked at triad shifting using inversions using the major to major connected by a tritone example c to f sharp there are six tritone pairs when we connect them we could do all the binary permutations namely major major minor minor major minor minor major and lastly we looked at a nice uh, block meets arpeggio combo exercise which will enable you to shift with a lot more musicality and improve and strengthen your timing as you do so right guys hope you found the lesson useful and for more of our lessons you should definitely consider heading over to nathanielschool.com for our video courses which go in a very structured way you can start from absolute beginner foundational and then move forward and you can also learn a bunch of instruments at our school you can learn the guitar you can learn vocals you can also learn the piano and i'm the piano teacher if you'd like to learn so uh, you just have to fill up the form the relevant uh, forms are in the description waiting for you to fill up right thanks a ton for watching the video catch you in the next one cheers